final day of the, the inaugural McGovern, uh, uh, not, not, not McGovern, right? not McGovern and the Brain, I'm from McGovern, it's from Maryland, the Maryland Collegiate STEM Conference. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to introduce one of the, the, the people who had a lot to do with getting this, this whole thing started and has been an inspiration for us. So, Dr. Chang from Mercy College. Right. Good afternoon. Um, I'm glad to be here. My name is Lulu Chang, and I'm the Vice President for the Academic Affairs at Mercer County Community College in New Jersey. So, you're wondering that why I'm here, right? And you're not part of Maryland. I used to be, actually I just left from Montgomery College last summer. I used to be Dean of Science and Engineering and um, Mathematics uh, at Montgomery College Rockwell campus, okay, until August, and then I left. Uh, but uh, I want to give you a little story about uh, how this conference was initiated uh, last November, and then I'll introduce uh, the, the keynote speaker uh, in five to ten minutes, okay? If it is okay with that. Anyway, okay, so uh, what happened was this. Uh, a uh, group of uh, faculty uh, from Maryland went to a conference called the STEM Tech Conference in Atlanta, Georgia last October, uh, organized by the Viewpoint Innovations. And at the conference, in fact, actually a group of us got together and talked about the potential conference for our STEM students in the state of Maryland. And after we came back, uh, Professor Ken, Khan at the Carroll Community College contacted me and said that well, we should have to do something about this one. What do you think? And I said that I'm glad to tackle th on this issue. And why don't we work together? So we had a, several phone conferences and email exchanges. And we decided to share this idea with the faculty from Maryland Community Colleges. So we actually arranged the one section at the APAC meeting in January. I believe it was at, uh, was it Prince George Community College? Yes. So we went there, and then it was extremely well attended, by the way. Almost 30 people showed up, Evan, representing almost 10 community colleges. And every single attendee loved the idea. So I shared this among my vision, and then Dr. Khan actually led the discussion, and he shared his vision about this one. And then we actually pretty much actually set the, what we wanted to do timeline-wise and everything. It was an ambitious timeline, by the way. I mean, starting something in January and make the conference happen in October was not easy to imagine, but actually we, we did it. So after that conference, what we did was that uh, Professor Khan and I sent out emails to the President and the Vice President for Academic Affairs at all 16 community colleges in the state of Maryland, and inviting them to join uh, for the steering committee, representing each college until you should send one administrator and one faculty, okay? And uh, so uh, we got response from about almost 12 community colleges. And then uh, we uh, uh, formed the steering committee and then we had the first phone conference in February. And after that, in fact, uh, uh, Professor Khan and then also the uh, BCCC, Baltimore City Community College, was heavily involved in this process as well. And then they actually believe that we need to have a s several subcommittees, like a registration committee, exhibition committee, program committee, bylaw committee, and so on. And then actually we formed those committees to run the program really more effectively. And we all worked really, really hard okay, since then. Then at the end of spring, okay, somebody had to host the conference. So I checked with my boss at Rockland campus, Dr. Judy Eckerman, and also the Margaret Latimer, who is provost at Germantown campus, because we're opening this building, okay, right now here, okay, in August, it's scheduled to open. So I said that Margaret, that, okay, why don't you host this one? And it's going to be a great one to celebrate this new building. And she said, absolutely, I'll support it. So Dr. Eckerman and then the, the, uh, the provost, uh, Ledmer, said that everything is going to be done and then whatever you need, actually ask about it and so on. So we worked hard, so we made sure that actually the first meeting is going to be at Montgomery College. And after that, whoever wanted to, okay, it's your chance. So if you want to host this conference next year, please let Dr. Khan know about this one. But then actually what happened was that when I left from this college during the summer, I had to give it up to somebody. And then I was looking it over, and then the Dean Hammond, who has been at Germantown campus for a long time, and he is, I respect him wholeheartedly, so I asked him that, could you please take over my responsibility and then make it happen? And that he was glad to do that, and then he made it happen. And, okay, I, I want to say this. This conference could not be happened if Dr. Khan did not 
agreed to do this one. I mean, he spent 24-7 for his company. So everything is done very, very well, and I'm so glad. And then also I actually said this. Uh, I, when I left from this place, I said that, you know what, this conference, I promise I'll come back, because there was a condition. He released me, the Raza released me from this uh, obligation, and so on. But to be honest with you, when we designed this one last uh, January, and Raza and I talked about it, okay, how many people are going to attend this conference? And then I predicted about 50 to 80, then it would be great success. I was wrong. And it's hard for administrative to accept, I you know, say it's wrong, but I, I would say wrong. So recently, about two weeks ago, when he sent me an email, he said that, Uru, you are wrong, so you owe me a Tesla. <laughs> so I told him that uh, I'll go to Vegas, I used to live in Vegas, so I, I will get to go to Vegas, and if I win the jackpot, I'll give it to you. And he specifically ordered that you have to give me the red one. <laughs> But anyway, I'm so glad that actually we are doing this one and that we have more than 300 people attending this conference. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> and yesterday we had 175 students here flocked in and then the speaker was targeting the students and talking very good one. And then today, I would like to introduce my keynote speaker, who is a friend of mine. I've known him for many, many years. He has been a leader of a community college in terms of the biomedical sciences and also undergraduate research at community colleges. So I, one time in my life, I served as a program director at the Division of Undergraduate Education at National Science Foundation for three years actually, 2008 to 2011. I was looking for some kind of a leader of undergraduate research at community college and I checked with the other program directors and they all said that there's one person we can name, that was a Jim Kula. Okay. That was his reputation at National Science Foundation. And then I contacted him and then he served as a mentor for the, some of the projects and so on. And then he actually secured $4 million from the National Science Foundation okay, to use grant, transforming undergraduate education in STEM. About, and then he actually is a PI and then also executive director of the CCC, CCURI, which is Community College Undergraduate Research Initiatives. He's in the fourth year, he has one more year to go, and he has a national conference actually out of the debt initiatives as well, and then Montgomery College one time hosted their annual meeting, poster section, at the Rockwell campus last year. So we have a great relationship about this one. So let me give you some of the ideas about what he did. Okay, he was a pre-med major and also biology major at Bucknett University undergraduate, and then he got a master's degree from the University of Connecticut. Then he did some doctoral training at the University of Rochester. And since then, actually, he got the faculty position, and also the, he's a director of the um, director of the biotechnology manufacturing at Finger Lakes Community College. Okay, and then also he serves as the New York Hub of uh, a director of the Northeast Biomanufacturing Center and Collaborative. It's NBC2, by the way, and that is actually NSF-funded uh, IT center, Advanced Technological Education Center project. And he has been uh, serving as a, you know, other boards and so on, numerous awards and so on. I do not want to elaborate too much about it. But please join me to welcome keynote speaker Tim Hume. Okay, I'm going to walk around, so I'm not good with the microphone. So if, if I if I start to do this, <laughs> right, because I forgot that I'm holding the microphone. Yeah, somebody just do like that. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for the invite. Uh, they're, they're, I love coming down here. So this, uh, this, uh, as you just heard, you know, this isn't my, my first time here. Uh, but it's my first time speaking at this conference, which probably isn't a big surprise since this is the first year we've run. Uh, so I'm really happy to be part of that. I always have that on my resume that I can. Uh, I can. So I'm, I'm going to actually talk to you a little bit about CCURI and a lot about what we've learned. Now the cool thing about this is that. Most of what I'm going to say that we found out or that what we do is, is, is stuff that you already know. But maybe I'm going to say it a different way 
and maybe if you start to see some of the best practices, you can start thinking about thinking about how you might sort of model some of the things that you're doing. So I'll give you some examples, some case studies from some of our uh, from, from some of our partners. I always put this up first because one of the things that I think as community college faculty that we need to get used to doing is that when somebody asks us why are you doing undergraduate research at your institution, you have, you have to have an answer for that. Because there's still that perception out there that we shouldn't be doing undergraduate research at community college. Because for some now it's not in our mission, right? So I always like to have answers. And I use these four reports as my sort of my foundation of how I get my answers. Uh, two of them are specific to biology, the two on the left. But the two on the right are just in general recommendations for what we should be doing uh, with respect to STEM education. And all of them talk about undergraduate research. And, and the PCAST report, the one to the right, specifically mentions that, that undergraduate research should be done in the first two years. So if that's if the president, right, if our government is saying that this should be done in the first two years, how is it that it shouldn't, how is it that it's not in the mission of the institutions that serve half of our undergraduate population, right? That it, it should be. So um, if you're interested, these are all basically free PDFs online that you can get to. And, and this is what they sort of all 